Hey, hey, what is shaking, homies? So today I got a DIY 3D printer up for an unboxing, build, and review. So this is the FL Sun Cube 3D printer, and it's a very large cube style 3D printer. Now these are very nice because they're very solid. They're also very easy to enclose if you ever want to enclose them. Um, there's tons of mods you can do to them, and they're just really cool printers. Now I've had this for literally like six weeks. And I moved into my new house and I was just so busy, I just didn't have time to build a printer to do one of these where I'm gonna have to build it. So I just popped it open and looked at it, made sure everything was in good condition still because this went through a move from one of my houses uh, to my new apartment and stuff. And it's just been through a lot. So everything's still um, in the proper containers here. I still have everything boxed up. Um, I haven't started building anything. I just kind of looked through it a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna do a little unboxing here. Um, this is a giant, a giant DIY kit. So I got like a million screws right there. We got all sorts of uh, couplings, bearings, all sorts of tons of stuff right there. We got a bunch of wire management stuff. Now, nice thing about this printer is because it's been sitting around for a while, I've printed all sorts of cool upgrades. So since I already have it apart, as I put it together, I'm gonna install all sorts of weird upgrades that I. Um, that I just went on uh, Thingiverse, typed in the name of this printer. There was a ton of them, so I printed off a bunch of random ones. And uh, some of them are just for looks, some of them are making more efficient. And uh, it'll just be cool to be putting it together as I put the upgrades on. So that's cool, so I got all these uh, nice fans. This is it, and there's end stops in here too, as well as my uh, Allen wrenches. If you've never had any FL Sun printers, they actually make some pretty good quality stuff. I've taken a look at their Delta. Um, which is a very cheap budget Delta, but it actually prints quite well. I don't have it anymore, I sold it, but the whole time I had it, it worked great. Uh, I also, I've taken a look at their DLP printer, which printed great. Here is some uh, threaded rods and uh, aluminum, uh, looks just like some 90 degree cut aluminum strips. So these are probably the corners, not quite sure. Here we got the smooth rods, which the axes will go on over with the the roller bearings. Okay, so we got those. Yeah, this is going to be a massive job. Um, very cool, they gave me two rolls of PLA. We got a bunch of uh, acrylic pieces here. Here we have our, our hot ends and everything. Oh yeah, and I believe this is a dual extrusion 3D printer, so that's why they give you two. Um, it looks like uh, we got our power supply, another something, end stop type thing or something, more cords, power cords, uh, motor cords, I got a sensor for auto bed level, which you don't have to use but um, can can use that and if I got it might as well use it. Uh, another piece of aluminum, something I 3D printed for wire management. We got a little screwdriver and wrench. Here is the motherboard. It looks like it's a MKS Gen LV 1.0. Got a bunch of, these are all injection molded plastic pieces. These are all metal brackets for the corners. Uh, we got a USB cord to plug it in. More acrylic pieces, oh my god, there's a lot. This is gonna take forever. We got some rubber bands to put together. Some clear acrylic pieces. We got our uh, heated bed. More clear acrylic pieces. We got many aluminum extrusions. Oh god, this is gonna take forever. <laughs> Maybe not. And then I got, left in the box, we got the PSU, the power supply, as well as all of our motors. So it looks like all the motors are all the same for the most part. Uh, oh, this foam there, and they're really, really good. Come on, get out of there. Got one out. Yeah, they have these in here really tight. There's no way they were gonna fall out during shipping. And yes, I believe they are all completely 
identical. Oh my gosh. And there's also an SD card that has all the info. I actually took that out and just downloaded it all onto my computer. Um, because I needed an SD card for something. <laughs> so I used that actually a couple weeks ago. But yeah, so this is going to take me just random guess 5 to 10 hours. I have no idea. I got to go to work in two hours. So I'm just going to get as much as I can now. And then I'll continue the video little by little. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, it probably won't be too hard. It'll just be really tedious. So let me get on my laptop. We'll do some step-by-step -step directions. We'll time-lapse this whole process. And then we'll get to printing. So let's do it. Okay guys, holy crap, this printer took me like three days to build. I was worked on it the first day for like four hours, the next day for like five or six hours, and then the third day I worked for it another like five or six hours, but most of the time was actually me fixing my wiring. I, I accidentally wired the X and the Y backwards so they were going the wrong way, um, and then I thought I had the, like, the polarity messed up, so I switched it, but it was really just I had them plugged into the wrong one. Oh, so that was a mess. Um, but I actually got it working, had my first print. Instead of using one of the stupid test prints on there, there was a bunch. I was like, screw it. They were all just like squares and circles, like like stupid stuff, nothing cool. So I printed this octopus with all these middle fingers. Uh, you'll see the time lapse of that. <laughs> but yeah, really cool. Um, overall, I, so far I'm impressed with it for, for everything except one thing. It does not have a part cooling fan, so that's kind of a problem, but it's a very easy solution. This is a very huge open uh, printer, so I'm sure there's many, many ways I can mount a part cooling fan on there, and if I go in Thingiverse and uh, type this printer, and I'm sure if someone's designed one, then I can just go print. So that's gonna be the first thing I wanna do, because there is no part cooling fan. Um, but other than that, the auto level actually works freaking awesome. If you have this version, you don't even need to plug in the, the, the Z limit switch, because you're going to use the auto level if you're going to use the auto level. If you're going to use the Z limit switch, then plug that in. Um, but if you use the auto level, just know you don't even need to plug that one in. I have it here wired to there, plugged into nothing. Uh, but it actually went together pretty good. The directions were good for what they were. They were just like pictures, like Lego, like Lego directions. But there was like 170 pages or something. It was a very long process. Probably one of the largest printers I've ever built. Um, I'd say this would be... The building process would be good for learning like about 3D printing and like how to do it, but this was a little more advanced. So if you're a young kid or you're buying this for your, your like, child, don't buy them this one. Uh, I'm going to tell you that right now unless you're going to help them put them together. If you're older, if it's like you've put together a printer before, you, you know what you're doing, yeah, you could totally manage this. Just know it's going to take a while. You're going to have to get a case of beer and all that good stuff. Maybe a couple cases of beer. Yeah, you're going to need a couple cases of beer. But it actually went together. Pretty good. I did this. I did it all by myself. Usually, I, a lot of times, I have my brother do it with me, just so I have another set of hands. But uh, you know, I put these uh, these three D printed upgrades. They're kind of just for look. They the things they had look just as solid as these ones. But I like the pink, and uh, I made this cable chain. I didn't make it long enough, so I just added this, and I got to mount that still. Um, but other than that, really cool, kind of customizable too on like where you want to mount the LCD, where you want to mount the power supply, you can kind of choose that yourself. So, um, yeah, I guess let's just go printing more stuff. So first PLA model was a success. Uh, I just used uh, the stock settings they, they tell you to use on the SD card in uh, Simplified 3D. Um, but I'll chalk up Cura. 
and we'll um, fire something off in Kura. Also too, I didn't even level the bed at all, I just screwed it on however. I put G29 in the start G-code and it does an auto bed level. So you don't even need to worry about how level your bed is if you're gonna use the auto level. So, I like that. Okay guys, so I added a uh, part cooling fan as the first modification and um, I actually took it off a different printer, but I wanted to think of hers and there's a whole bunch of different designs for free if you get this printer. Um, but now it is actually printing way better. So check this out. So yeah, I'll let this finish. I'll show you what it looks like when it finishes, and then we'll get the time lapse and some other stuff. But um, yeah, it doesn't seem to have any of these like stringing problems and uh, over extrude. You know, this looks a lot rougher. Um, this is not done yet, obviously, but the early layers uh, look much nicer. Okay guys, so this is done and it looks much better. There was the first one. And then once we added the part cooling fan. Um, now there's a bunch of things on Thingiverse. If you need another fan, just like the fan itself, one thing you could do is honestly, I think this is a little overkill having the two fans here cool off the board. Um, I bet you could just take one of these. But these are only a couple dollars on like eBay or Amazon or whatever. I'll put a link down below. But these are extremely cheap. If you buy these, or when you buy these on Gearbest, you can get these on Gearbest too. You can even get like, I think a 12 pack of these for like a couple dollars. Super cheap. Um, you might have one of these lying around though like I did, which made that even easier. But uh, just know that uh, you're definitely going to want to add a part cooling fan. Just like any printer that doesn't have a part cooling fan um, before and after. So that's all the only change I did. Uh, everything seems to be going good, so let's uh, do a couple more test prints for sure. But the build process, although being crazy huge, um, I guess it was kind of fun. Now I'm kind of like attached to this thing. I spent so long building it. I'm starting to really, you know, it's growing on me. guys so I've had this up and running for a good couple days now this whole video has taken me eight days so far so a lot's gone into this printer and when I was first building this it, it was a very tedious task I mean it literally it took me three days of working on it you know several hours every day and um, but then I kind of like grew attached to it it's like I don't know it's like uh, you know I don't know I love it like my idiot brother that, you know, you know that like where you know, everyone's got that one brother that's like crazy and an idiot and you hate him most of the time, but you still love him. That's like this printer now, like I, I grew super attached to it. And uh, I, I ran into a couple like things when I was putting it together and there's a Facebook group for them and I'll put it down below. They have a ton of members and it's very active. Like everything I posted in there, I was getting answers right away. Uh, if you want like recommendations on any upgrade parts or anything, people will shoot you over Thingiverse links. This is a very, very customizable printer because of just the way it is, how it's like all just a box. If you wanted to enclose it, it'd be very easy to just put acrylic sides on it uh, and you can print your high temp materials and everything. Um, it's just too open to print ABS here. Uh, it w I could tell you right now without even trying it, it, it you're not gonna wanna print ABS without an enclosure on this big of a printer. Unless it's something little, then you'll still be able to do it. The bed, I tested how hot the bed and the extruder. They were both able to get hot enough and everything. Um, now, this is how much spare parts this printer has. They come with extra everything. 
There's um, and you can set this up for dual extrusion. Cause I've spent so long putting this thing together, I, I want to leave it like this. <laughs> I finally got it working, like printing really good. Like I, these last couple of prints I did turned out really, really good. The yo-yo is awesome. Um, it worked until it broke, and then I had to glue it back together. I'm gonna have to print that at a higher infill, um, but still, it looks amazing. It turned out very, very good. Um, very impressed with everything. It's all open source. All the firmware is very easy to update. Once again, this is a very, very customizable machine, and it's very solid. Like it's all made out of metal extrusions. Like, and all these parts that I printed for upgrades. These are like unnecessary upgrades. They're more just to make it look cooler, and I like adding a little pink and stuff to it. Um, but yeah, but it also has like extra stepper drivers. If you blow out a stepper driver, it comes with extra wires. Extra heating cartridge, extra thermistors. Uh, here is like the dual extrusion nozzle. So you gotta, there's a whole separate set of directions for putting it together like that. And I did not realize that until after I had it all the way together. Maybe I would have done it the other way. Um, but right now I'm liking it. The auto bed level works amazing. You just put the G29 command in the start G code on any slicer and it works great. I was finding that my best results was when I was using Repetor Host and slicing using the Cura engine, not using the slicer engine, I was getting uh, much better results. Um, that was one of the main differences in these two, and the quality difference is um, crazy. But yeah, this was also printed using the Cura slicer as well. Um, but yeah, if you're looking for a DIY kit, this one for the for the price, you're getting a giant. I mean, you're getting a giant build volume, a giant printer, lots to work with, plenty of room to upgrade. This is a very, very customizable printer, and if you're somebody that likes to build things, this is right up your alley. But if you're somebody that does not like to build things, I would just pay the little extra and get something that's mostly pre-assembled, like an Alpha ICU 20 or something, you know, something around those price ranges. I'll put other recommendations for printers down below. But, honestly, for this printer being a little bit old, it's like as six months old at least now, and, um, and everything, it, it actually is really nice because now it has a big community of people behind it. There's plenty of upgrade parts, lots of supports if anything goes wrong. And every single piece on here is just like a standard part that's very cheap to replace. Like if your LCD goes bad, these are only $10. I think the board it uses is like $16 or something. Like nothing is expensive on this whole thing. Um, it uses a nice power supply. Make sure you have that switched to the proper voltage if you live in the USA. Make sure that's switched to 110. Um, but yeah, really impressed. The only downside was there was no part cooling fan. Uh, if you have another printer lying around, you can just rip it off and glue it on like I did. Or there is a lot on Thingiverse. There is like so many modifications to the fan shroud uh, that, or you could design your own. So that's a very easy upgrade. I'd recommend doing that upgrade first, um, and maybe even while you wait for that upgrade, just putting a little like one of those desk fans that's on low, blowing on your print um, until you have one printed. Because these first prints when I didn't have a park cooling fan were a little rough. But that's a simple upgrade and they give you two rolls of PLA. I printed a whole bunch of stuff and uh, and it worked out awesome. So really liking this printer, gonna use it more and more. Um, let me know down below what type of modifications you wanna see me do to it because I wanna make this thing a little crazier, a little more high tech and I'm definitely uh, slowly falling in love with this thing. One of my, went from being the biggest pain building um, to just like my new favorite. I, I, get, I review a lot of these printers, so I take it for granted um, that I get so many that are already pre-assembled and it's been a while since I did a DIY kit. But when you start from a big pile of parts and you have a finished product like this that actually works and starts printing, it gives you a different feeling of accomplishment than just buying a kit. And also, if you're new to printers, this is a good way to learn about printers by building this. This one would be a little challenging if, it's your, if you're young into your first printer, but if you're pretty tech savvy, uh, you're the type of person that always built Legos, yeah, you'll be able to do this, no problem. So, thank you guys for watching. Thank you, GearBest, once again for hooking it up. FL Sun, I give you the big thumbs up on this one. Uh, it was a little rocky at first, but uh, you know, just like any marriage, we got through it and it ended up great. So, I'll see you guys later, and peace out.